Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to uh, another update on this Tuesday night. It is uh, February 13th, 2024, Valentine's Day tomorrow. 9.45 p.m. here at California time. Latest activity shows a, uh, looks like some movement down into the Middle America Trench with a 4.0 here, somewhere in the mix. Uh, we did see some larger earthquake activity here throughout the day today. Uh, that is a six-pointer down there across the Peru-Chile Trench here, relatively shallow. Uh, it is in a zone that does see, well, does see some mega quake activity here. In fact, the largest earthquake ever recorded was at 9.5 back in the uh, early 60s. So definitely can see uh, quite a bit of large scale activity. But for now, six pointer there uh, just off the coast of the Chile area coming in about 22 kilometers deep. So it doesn't look like we've seen any uh, other earthquake activity following that, at least on the USGS map. Uh, quite a few threes though and some twos there following that six pointer on the emsc globe uh i've seen some movement kicking off down here across the south sandwich trench as well got a little swarming going on here uh, literally within a couple minutes of each other we've seen the upper four and even the upper five uh, in the south sandwich trench area so it looks like things are starting to build a little bit of pressure out here across the area continue to watch that uh, down here or up here across the Puerto Rico region. One little earthquake on the Peru, uh, Puerto Rico Trench. It's going to be a 3.4 coming in. Other than that, we've got some uh, smaller microquake activity out there in the region. So, all right, let's take a look here at the state, see what's going on. Got some movement north here of uh, the Stillwater area uh, of Oklahoma. Uh, looks like Marlin area of Oklahoma has seen a 2.2 and a 1.6. Not for sure what's out here. Um, but it does show that there's at least some oil fields out here in the vicinity of this earthquake activity. Quite a bit, actually. Uh, further to the south here, Texas still rocking and rolling out there in their oil fields. Uh, for the Pacific Northwest, got a handful of smaller quakes out here, including one uh, just off the coast here of Ocean Shores, Ocean Shores Washington. It's an easy one to say, right? 1.8 earlier this afternoon. All right, getting down into the California area. Still seeing some movement here across the Cascadia subduction zone. The southern end here of the Cascadia area. Uh, some ones and some two, well, at least one two-pointer there uh, today. This makes uh, somewhat elevated conditions out here, specifically in this area of the subduction zone. Looking at about 22 earthquakes or so, 20 earthquakes within this region. Now, these are subduction zone quakes, not surface quakes, because they're taking place down there somewhat deep into the Cascadia uh, about 20 kilometers one there 29 kilometers so definitely seen some strain out here, here building up uh, now let's take a look at the trimmer map tonight I bet you it's somewhat elevated down there uh, well at least in Oregon it is uh, and the Vancouver Island range looks like we're looking at 457 epicenters of trimmer down into the subduction zone of the Cascadia of course which extends from about here, the Queen Charlotte Sound area, southward to Northern California, where we're seeing the uh, Northern California activity. Not a whole lot up here in terms of earthquake movement, but uh, uh, let me check the, uh, see if we got uh, Canada map here keyed up real quick. Haven't checked the uh, activity up in Canada for a while. Normally when things get active up here, I like to look at the uh, uh, the, the version of earthquake activity here from the Canada folks. Now here is the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. This is the earthquake activity over the last... Oh, it looks like we've seen a couple earthquakes here in the last week or so along the Cascadia northern segment or just off of it. Um, really not seeing anything of abnormal activity. Quite a few smaller quakes up here though along the plate boundary of the North American and the Pacific plate uh, in this area. But... Uh, as far as the rest of Canada goes, looks like a little bit of activity throughout the uh, last week or so. All right, uh, further down south, it looks like California is still lighting up out here, getting uh, some movement outside of the Reno area. Remember, this area has seen some swarming here in the past. Uh, I think it's been in the past 30 days. Let's see what we got for all magnitudes. Yeah, a couple different swarms going on here now. A newer one just to the west of our previous swarm that happened back in... Uh, uh, looks like a, a week or so ago in the same area. We're seeing that movement kick up here tonight. Again, just south of Reno. Uh, definitely seeing some activity stirring up out there uh, off of one of these fault systems here, it looks like. 
Uh, so we'll continue to keep an eye on that, maybe for some further movement. Uh, as far as Southern California goes, it looks as though, let's go ahead and zoom into the area of interest here. Uh, still seeing some activity throughout the afternoon and evening. The activity has not died down here completely. Uh, look at the last seven days of activity around the Salton Sea area and the vicinity of the most recent uh, uh you know, moderate quake where that 4.8 struck here around the El Centro area shows about 272 epicenters of earthquakes here uh, in the in this area. Still watching potentially for some migration and some further movement here across the plate boundary. So no, I don't think we're out of the woods yet. Uh, we'll continue to watch that uh, overnight. Uh, we really haven't seen too much westward activity out here in terms of uh, large scale movement. Yes, down south here but uh it's kind of on the opposite side of the plate where i'm looking for some further large-scale movement it's either going to happen out here across the uh, uh western areas of pacific plate or potentially out here across the uh west coast uh the general plate movement out here uh we did see a little bit of activity out here uh, off the coast of south america here recently let me pull that up here and show you guys uh well it looks like it's over the 24 hour period so we've got to bring this map up uh, these two earthquakes out here, one from uh, yesterday, 4.8 out here in the fracture zone. And then we had one about a week prior, uh, 4.9, a little bit further out. So when that activity happens, uh, these fracture zones here put further strain out along the South America region into the subduction zone. Uh, doesn't really show it specifically here, but uh, if they had the arrows here, it would definitely be pointing towards further along the uh, subduction zone area. The fracture zones in general, though. Uh, move with the uh, the general direction of these arrows so that would put strain out here across the South America region so we're not quite done yet though with the uh, potential larger scale activity uh, around the Pacific plate I'm still kind of watching it uh, California keeps lighting up and uh, I don't know it's something big is still brewing out here around the Pacific plate just haven't put my finger exactly on where it's going to take place but we've got to keep an eye California and out here across these quiet zones of the Kurokama Chaka Trench. Definitely uh, capable of producing some large earthquakes there. Uh, looking at that area, looks like they did see a 3.9 here earlier this evening uh, into the Kurokama Chaka right here, somewhat deep there off the globe. Uh, aside from that, uh, what do we got here? Typical clustering going on. Some older movement, though, south of the Philippines. Uh, far as the area back along the plate boundary here. There's that earthquake in New Zealand from this morning, a 4.2. Let's go ahead and see what is uh, ha happening down there in the uh, New Zealand area. Looks like eight hours ago, uh, 2.5. There's a four-pointer that the USGS is showing as a 4.2. So we got to go to all magnitudes and see what we got going on here across the area. 3.6, it looks like, along the Kermadec Trench. Uh, a couple other smaller quakes out there as well, but... Uh, there's the Kermadec Trench earthquake. Not really see anything major going on here, but New Zealand's definitely seen some activity here recently. Uh, somewhat elevated. The drums, though, today look a little bit quieter. Here's some older movement there from uh, coming up on almost 24 hours here uh, from last night. But uh, for the most part, as you can see, not a whole lot going on there across the uh, New Zealand area for now. Uh, Yellowstone National Park looks like we got a couple smaller earthquakes coming in here. Uh, to the area that's going to be this one down here what's going on here when I click on that see this little earthquake on this map Mary Lake showed up as well looks like um, these are current right 0530 yeah we're, we're uh, definitely current there but it just looks kind of weird on this one as soon as you click on it there we see more data at the bottom okay either way definitely a little bit of earthquake activity there across Yellowstone nothing major going on though for now uh, it would be it would be obvious if there was uh, some major activity all right into the Hawaii Islands area still seeing some movement uh, around the Pahala area one earthquake around Mauna Kea that's a 2.3 fairly deep though underneath this area and one little oddball earthquake way off the coast of Captain Cook Hawaii there the big island 2.7 somewhat deep as well uh, so let's see what we got here for the latest statements on the Kilauea volcano and then we'll take a look at uh, Iceland activity here 
tilt meter right off the bat here uwe does show some inflation here but uh not a whole lot uh compared to uh the past couple months here of inflation that's been uh just kind of slow here but we are gradually going up in terms of uh re-inflation i should say right there uh but uh you know, it's uh, there's definitely been a lot of displacement of magma recently. Earthquake activity in this region still shows. Um, I don't know what's going on here with this map recently, but it's just acting a little funny here on the USGS network. This does look like it's up to par. This is the UTC time, February 14th, Valentine's Day, um, for the UTC time. And that matches up with the uh, 0530 time frame that I have here. So everything is good. Looks like uh, at least their data is up and running for now. That's good news. Keep an eye on things here. Still seeing some earthquake activity, though, as you can see on the map. Uh, a little bit further south here around the around this area shows some of that distant earthquake activity. I'm not for sure what's going on. Before, I'd click on the image and it would pop up. But now you have to click on uh, the little link. So a little weird still little glitchy but hopefully they figure it out they'll get it right so earthquake activity continuing uh the hawaii area still got to watch that because there's been a lot of displacement of magma here towards the southwest rift zone and south leading off this way here towards the loihi seamount continue to watch that all right uh what else we got here across the rest of the world here uh, and then we'll check iceland aside from down south here in the south sandwich trench quite a bit of activity not a whole lot further up north here uh, I was checking out some of these GPS conditions here across the area of Iceland. There's the uh, map, Grindavik, of course, right down to the south. Now, one of these uh, is not working because it got uh, hit with the magma there from the previous eruptive activity. Lava, I should say, uh, from the previous eruptive activity. So that one's offline. But if we look at the most recent one here, uh, still seeing... Um, Make sure I refresh this to see if we got the most recent data. That's a little different now. I meant to click on this one right here. Still seeing, uh, looks like a little activity on the uptick here in terms of inflation. Uh, and more so on this map. They're cut off like that due to um, the uh, the levels out here. It doesn't want to show it way off the map, so they kind of do that cutoff method. Uh, but it definitely looks like things are on the uptick out here once again in terms of inflation around the Savart Singhi area. So we got to watch that pretty closely. Uh, I don't think we're quite ready for an eruption yet, eruptive activity yet, but it uh, uh, could happen here. Uh, and of course, with earthquake activity, that will be a good indicator of uh you know what's going on or maybe about what's about to take place here but looking at man look at this six six earthquakes in the last six hours i meant to go oh i see what's going on here i'm still using the uh microsoft edge i normally don't use this one but it seems to work better on the uh the uh inflation graphs there so let's go over here and use this one Uh, okay, 25 earthquakes here in the last 12 hours, so not a huge amount. Uh, we are getting some activity off on the rift zones. Got to watch that. Uh, if these start getting bigger, more active, then, uh, then we look for activity up here as well, potentially north of Iceland, then things could get more active in between those zones here. And that means further activity in terms of uh, further pushes of magma and repressurization of the area. Right now, there's not a whole lot of earthquake activity across the Grindavik region. Uh, just still kind of watching that. Okay, space weather activity here. Still continuing with a proton event. Goodness, this is like a week of proton activity. Uh, and mostly around the southern polar regions. This was put out today. Current UTC time. Um, I'm not for sure when that's going to go away, but uh, that's a lot longer than I've seen in a long time. 99% uh, certainty there, obviously. 15% chance for an X flare, M flare at 55, C flare around 99% chance. Now, notice things have kind of flatlined here across the solar flare detection chart, indicating 
that things are starting to calm down in terms of the instability that's been seen out here across a couple different sunspot regions. Now this one here, I had some high hopes of, and it did produce an M flare or two, but uh, it is scooting off on the southwestern limb. Uh, we'll be out of sight, out of mind here soon. And it doesn't look to be all that complex. It's huge, but it's not quite complex there in the magnetic field areas that it harbors there. Uh, and this region up here is getting a total split between the main cores here. And uh, that's not good for uh, flaring. So basically everything, uh, at least from what I can see here on the map, is decaying. Uh, everything looks fairly stable, or at least about ready to go completely stable in some of these sunspots so we'll have to watch see what else is coming around the bin hopefully we can get uh, a decent cme or directed um was that a dud that happened remember our g2 class storm that we were uh, forecasting well it never materialized things never came about uh so it completely missed us uh maybe from the earth sun plane maybe it went uh, well, it was kind of positioned a little bit on the north, so maybe it missed us to the north. Who knows? But it doesn't look like we're going to see anything uh, for now in terms of Aurora. So that is kind of a bummer, but we'll uh, hope for some uh, CME activity here in the days ahead. All right. California got our another, uh, another storm system in coming in uh, late tonight, I think, maybe early tomorrow morning. Not going to expect much from here, from this storm system. Um, but this weekend, yes, we're definitely looking at more of a significant rainmaker and snowmaker there in the mountains as we head into the weekend. And early next week looks to be quite wet as well. Look at those rainfall rates there across the central coast, northern California. Uh, going to get uh, some flooding possibilities out here again because that storm system is going to spin off the coast for a little bit and just continue to soak California with some moisture there for a couple days. And then maybe another storm system after that, and another one after that. And, uh, well, yeah, in the March it looks uh, wet as well. So, uh, you know, it's, it is wintertime. We've had quite a winter. Uh, that's definitely good. I'm not going to complain about the rain one bit, but there is some flooding concerns out here once again. This only goes to the 23rd, uh, about 10 days, so this doesn't include all the other storms. But if you look here, we're looking at maybe another 3 to 5 inches of rainfall around the northern Sacramento Valley area. Uh, either way, California uh, looks quite wet here over the next 10 days and then beyond, at least according to some of these weather models. So we'll continue to watch that, report back on it. Uh, for now, folks, I am going to call it a night. Um, just kind of waiting, seeing, uh, seeing how things play out here. Uh, just a little standing still point right now, I think, here between the east, uh, eastern Pacific Plate here section of it uh, and then the western uh, areas of the Pacific Plate. Uh, just seems a little too quiet here. I haven't really seen anything that makes me think that, uh, that we are at least uh, looking at relief of pressure out here across the west coast. It's still looking like we're seeing some of these inland quakes kick up here throughout the day, uh, and that's still a pretty decent sign of some strain out here against the... Uh, against the plate boundary and of course watch for swarming if we see it kick up a little bit further up north towards the brawley seismic zone uh then that uh will definitely be a little bit more of an eye opener because of course that sits very close there to the southern branch of the san andreas fault we'll catch you guys out here tomorrow folks i am just done for today have a good one stay safe out there